So I'm working on malignant melanoma. This is the deadliest skin tumor. And we know that malignant melanoma cells can enter the lymphatic system even in very early stages of the tumor. Even if it's one or two millimeter depth, it can enter the uh, metastasize into the lymphatic system. And when it metastasizes the lymphatic system, the next step is to get into the blood system and send metastasis to distant sites. And this is the reason why people actually die from melanoma. So it, it was very puzzling for us how the tumor, the melanoma tumor, can cause the lymphatic system, the lymphatic vessels uh, to, to grow up around him. Because we already know that uh, we all have lymphatic system. This is very important for our health. And we have lymph vessels that are coming from our skin. But we know that in melanoma, we see much more lymphatic vessels around the tumor, even in very early phases of melanoma. And we know that this is very important for the metastasis into the lymphatic system. So we asked ourselves how that happens. So some of it was known. There is a, a protein, very important protein called VGFC that is secreted by the melanoma cells, but this was not enough to understand. So we thought that maybe a melanoma can secrete a vesicles that affect the, the lymphatic system. We know that melanoma is actually is made of melanocytes. Melanocytes are the cells in our body that make the pigment, the melanin. This is why we have brown color. So melanoma can secrete melanosome, which are vesicles. And this was our hypothesis, that melanoma, through the secretion of melanos uh, melanosomes, can affect the growth of the lymphatic vessels. And indeed, what we found is that melanoma cells, even in the very early phases of melanoma progression, secrete melanosomes that can enter the cells of the lymphatic system. And the, it doesn't only enter the system, but it can affect it. We see that the lymphatic system, the lymphatic cells, when they take up the melanosomes, they become more active. They make more vessels. They migrate more. They are much more active and they secrete many more uh, uh, proteins that are important for the creation of more uh, lymphatic vessels. So uh, this was very interesting and we think that this is a very important mechanism by which melanoma can affect its uh, microenvironment, the environment of the tumor. And we already, in our past works, we already showed that melanosomes can affect other cells in the tumor vicinity. And this was the first time that we showed the effect on cells of the lymphatic system. So this was uh, our first uh, uh, and very important uh, work about lymphangiogenesis, the creation of, of lymphatic cells. And uh, uh, our next step is uh, uh, to understand how the melanosomes can affect not only the growth of the lymphatic system, but also how it affect the immune reaction that happens in the vicinity of the tumor and the, in, uh, very importantly in the lymphatic system. It's because we know that the future of melanoma treatment probably uh, is in immunotherapy. Immunotherapy meaning that we try to activate the own uh, system, the own immune system against the tumor. And we know that cells in the environment of the tumors have many mechanisms to downregulate, to silence the immune system. And this is probably one of the reasons why melanoma can escape from the immune system. So now we work not only on the effect of melanoma on the growth of the lymphatic system, but how the melanosomes affect the, the immune system in the lymphatic uh, vessels and other cells in the, in the environment of the tumor. And we think this is very important because if we can understand the mechanism by which the cells in the vicinity are affected by melanosomes, maybe we can intervene and we can prevent the, the progression of the melanoma to the lymphatic system and then to the metastasis, to the distant metastasis. ICR funding was very important for my career. Actually, it, now it's the second time I got the ICRF grant. And as a physician, uh, it's, it's very hard uh, to establish a lab and uh, grow the lab. Because as an MD-PhD, as a physician scientist, you always have to balance your, uh, your work and responsibility. And uh, uh, I believe very much in the, in the role of physician scientists because 
we are in close contact with the patient. We can see the real clinical questions and we can take it back to the lab and work on it. Not only that, we can also work on, on uh, human specimens and we not on, only on mice and uh, cells that were grown in the lab for generations that are very far away from the uh, real tumors. So that was very important to me to work, to work and to, to be a scientist and also to be a physician. And this is a challenge. Uh, this is a, a great challenge. And the grants I got from ICRF really helped me in establishing my lab and, uh, uh, and funding my research, even in the first phases uh, when I came back from the postdoc in, in Boston in uh, 2010, when I established my lab. And uh, even now, when I, uh, in the last year, when I, uh, uh, my, my lab uh, grew and I, can, I could get more students and uh, postdoc and lab managing.